Okay, it's 3.40, so let's get started. So can everybody hear me at the back? Okay, awesome. I was not expecting these many people, so I'm nervous. Okay, uh, so just let's get started. Uh, my name is Adnan. I run the global strategy for open networking out of the networking BU at Dell. Uh, wanted to take this opportunity to, to, to tell you guys about what Dell is doing as far as opening up the, the networking space and then how it enables different uh, orchestration tools and, 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 and uh, serves as a platform. Uh, the other thing that, that I'm looking for in this session is, is, is actually some feedback because uh, this is something very new as you'll see uh, that, that a major uh, networking vendor has taken on and, and I mean uh, feedback on are we on the right path, do you guys think we are smoking crack or do you, I mean uh, it's, it's uh, so, so as much as I'm here to tell what Dell is doing and how it's all awesome I, I want to hear uh, you know the other side as well and, and it's a pretty good forum so, so this should be fun. So uh, let's get started. So it's just topics, I mean, what, where is Dell going? I think a lot of people in this session at Dell have, have covered these things about how we are looking at software-defined enterprise. I'm not going to spend too much time. And then what is open networking and, and why did we do this and what did we do actually? And then, and then how does it fit into the enterprise space and how, how you guys can benefit from it? So, so, so with that, if you look at what, what the challenge is, I mean, right now every, every CIO or everybody is talking about how do you how do you make your infrastructure abstracted from, from the workloads and, and how can you use your infrastructure in the most efficient manner possible? So that, that actually is one of the problems that exists and, and everybody has different kinds of solution. Everybody talks about software defined enterprise um, and, and I, I personally fundamentally believe that Dell's approach is a pretty unique approach as far as, as, as this is concerned and, and it'll be interesting to see what you guys think. And, but that's, that's the thing that we are going after. How do we provide the necessary tools and the infrastructure that you guys can go and define and build infrastructures the way you want to? Because one size does not fit all and, and we don't want to impose our philosophy on, on how you do things. So, so that's, that's how we are thinking about this. So if you look at it, I mean, the fundamental thing about software defined enterprise it, it, is, is it should give you a choice of picking the best of breed solutions from the industry and actually enable you to go deploy those solutions rather than locking you into a vertically integrated stack across the board. And, and that, is, that, is, that is something which we believe is, is absolutely uh, a key to, to, that, to software defined enterprise. And I mean, let's keep going because I want to spend time on some interesting things. So this is our vision of the enterprise. I think everybody here has heard a lot about software defined enterprise, but if you look at the data center component of the software defined enterprise, uh, we, we believe that uh, you know, the, 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 the STN uh, on the server side with, with virtualization, you know, the, the software defined server thing happened. I mean, a lot of people here are using virtual servers. I mean, I'm assuming most of the room is. Uh, but, but networking has been a closed black box. And, and we believe that one of the things that has been prohibiting the adoption of various SDN solutions out in the market has been the fact that networking vendors have had very close solutions and then we'll talk about that in a second. So open networking initiative from Dell is not SDN, it just enables SDN. And the, and the reason why I say that is because I want everybody to understand that Dell is, at Dell we are looking at building the platforms that will give you the choice to, to go deploy various solutions on top, be it OpenStack, be it any, any other orchestration tool that, that you want to go and, and build on top. So that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the fundamental thing that I want everybody to sort of take away from, from this slide. And the second thing is STN or software defined networking is the second most abused word I think in the industry after cloud. Uh, and uh, it's, it's the, the only thing that at Dell we are looking at is we are, we are trying to solve the first letter in that whole story, which is the S, which is software. How do we provide a platform in the networking portion of our enterprise strategy that lets you run any kind of software on your network so you can actually truly have a software-defined data center, which is part of your bigger enterprise strategy. So did that make sense so far with me? OK. So what did we do? 
what we did was, if you look at the big box on the left, that, that is networking at, 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 at exists today. You go to, you come to us, you go to any of our friends across the street, you go to any other networking vendor, you get a vertically integrated stack, which is, it's a closed black box, which is my own ASICs. I will go and give you uh, closed hardware. I will then put my operating system on it. I will give you a choice of protocols that you can run on it, some industry standard protocols, BGP, OSPF, whatever. And then I will have my own proprietary protocols. And then I will, you will actually have to buy the whole red box with support from me. And then that's it. And I think uh, over the last three to five years, people have been looking at different ways to do SDN. And a lot of pressure came on the industry. And, and the open flow uh, was the second way that people could actually talk to the switch outside the traditional protocols. Can, how many people here know what open flow is? Just, just. Okay, everybody, okay. So um, our belief is that when two things needed to happen. First of all, a lot of people had to get together and agree on a standard. And then the customers had to wait for vendors to go implement those standards. So, so that, those two things uh, within, by definition, did uh, hamper the innovation uh, uh, on that side. We never looked at opening up the operating system as a platform. And if you look at it, the application ecosystem on the switch did really, did not thrive. You were, either you could talk to my switch using open flow or traditional protocols, or if I was nice enough in the last few years, I gave you API access. On the things that I wanted you to give, go touch. So that is, that is, that was the fundamental problem at Dell networking that we were looking at. And, uh, and, and, we, we, we didn't have to go far. We, we actually went back and, and looked at what we did with servers a decade ago or, or 12 years ago. It was before my time in the industry, so I don't remember the exact year. But what we did was we, we you had this vertically integrated mainframe model either from our friends at IBM or, 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 or Sun. And, and Dell came in and we basically gave, if you look at the picture on the right, we standardized on x86 hardware. We gave a choice of the operating system to our customers. And what happened is the application ecosystem on the compute infrastructure thrived. People started building applications that ran on the compute infrastructure. And today, look at the application choice that you have that you can deploy in your enterprise, where the server and the operating system on the server serves as the platform. So we took the same learning and, and we brought it back to networking and we decided to take this bold step to go break the model. So from now onwards, Dell networking is going to give customers a choice of what operating system they want to run on their switch. So you guys can, and we will support it. You still can, can run our own operating system if you want. You can run Cumulus, which is the first partnership we announced. How many people here are familiar with Cumulus? Cumulus. OK, fair amount. And the reason why we did Cumulus was uh, Cumulus is a full Linux-based operating system. You get a Linux prompt. You can deploy any Linux app on it. It serves it essentially making switch closer and closer to the server, and they abstract the front end ports of the switch to, as 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 local Ethernet ports. Other than that, it's just Linux. So you can take any application and you can run it on the switch. So we looked at operating systems out there, and we said we are going to bring a choice of OSs to the industry, which are going to be serving as platforms for the networking infrastructure. Hence, if you step back. This is how SDN is supposed to be, that you go enable the software component on the switch. Uh, we announced that in January. We've had incredible amount of traction still then. And that's where we are going. And uh, right now, it's available on two platforms, one 48 port 10 gig, one th uh, Trident 2 32 port 40 gig. But we are looking at accelerating that and bringing more and more platforms with that choice. And eventually, the second thing we did was, you know what, same thing as servers. One throat to choke, if you have a problem, you pick up the phone and you call Dell. As we serve a broad amount of enterprise customers, we can, we can, we can go and support this. Again, same thing we did with servers. But just the mindset of going and breaking the model was a, was a pretty big leap. And, and I mean, in this bigger forum, I can't share the kind of discussions we had internally. So what's, what's the, what's, where is this going? Why Cumulus? The network needs to mimic the servers. 
How many people here run different tool set to manage their network infrastructure and, and server infrastructure? Wouldn't it be nice to have one? That was the reason why we looked at Cumulus and, and, and we brought them on as a partner. Second thing is they're hardware agnostic. Same thing as the server model. They have a very fast pace of adopting different kind of hardware platforms. So you break the hardware innovation with the software innovation. Same thing as servers. If you look at it today, you don't have to upgrade your OS just because the faster CPU came from Intel or a bigger SSD came. You can write the hardware innovation wave independent of upgrading your software. So in network, it wasn't the case, by the way. You had to buy a vertically integrated stack. So here we are giving our customers a choice as to whatever pace they want to move on. Second thing, third thing is networking operating system that can serve as a platform. You can deploy any Linux app on it. The interesting thing is do not deploy Oracle server on it because network, networking switches don't have the same compute horsepower that the servers have. So, so, so if that, but there are applications out there that run on servers traditionally because they just could not run on the switch. And it would be a lot more efficient to run those applications on the switch. How many, anybody here familiar with software based load balancing? Right? You run it on a server today. Wouldn't it be nice if it was running on the switch? That is where it's supposed to be. But we, we, you know, we, we, we sort of got away with it as networking companies for 15 years. So uh, that, that's, that's the other thing. So it's native Linux. It's not for the traditional network admins, quite honestly, because you get a Linux prompt. You don't get a CLI like the traditional operating system. So it's a little bit of a leap. But for server guys, it's pretty good. You can leverage the ecosystem that exists today from a Linux toolset standpoint to manage your network provision as, as, as you would in a, a, your, your, your server ecosystem. So hence the reason for bringing Cumulus up, uh, hence the partnership. And with Dell, you pick up the phone, you call us, and, and we, give, we, we basically stand behind it and we ship it what you need. So let me touch on one thing uh, in, a, in a second. How many people here are wondering if how are we different than the ODMs? Anybody? Okay. Why white box or bare metal switch? See, if you, if you, the reason why we got into this was because we believe that we have a significant amount of value to bring to our customers that the white box switches cannot bring. And here is the reason. If today you want to go and do this with a white box vendor, you have to go buy the chip. You have to build your own supply chain. You have to get your operating system running on it. You have to put the sparing and everything in place so you can actually uh, uh, replace and automate the box. So you actually get a vertically integrated lock because you made all those investments. And there is a certain amount of volume commitment that sometimes is required to get the kind of pricing that is needed from the white, white box vendor. With Dell, you don't have to make those investments. We are going to continue to innovate on the hardware side, on our software as well, and on the partner software ecosystem. So you can actually ride the wave as far as the best silicon is concerned and also the best operating system features that, that are concerned. So that's, that's how we believe we are a little different. So if you look at them, I mean, basically, we are unlocking the hardware portion first. So second is we are basically going to give more and more vertical options up the networking stack, starting from the top of rack to the core to high density platform. So you, are, you have the same flexibility. You have a choice of our own operating system. Then you have the Cumulus, Cumulus Linux as an option, which can be managed by the rich ecosystem of Linux, Linux management tools that are out there. So how many people here use Chef, Puppet? This integrates right in. So you don't have to go and, and do use a different uh, uh, cacti on Azure. If you do that, that's fine, it'll work. But you don't have to go develop a separate ecosystem for your networking tools. And then it has integrated up the stack with, with different uh, overlay providers as well. And then the, the beauty is, if you look at it, your applications are, can also run on the switch. We are looking at different overlay technologies and, and virtual overlay functions as we, as we bring. And that's some of the feedback that I would like from, from the room as to what kind of application ecosystem you would like to see come on the switch. Honestly, I mean, we've, you know, with customer interaction, we get some good ideas. 
but, but that's, the, that's how the stack works and how it is different from the networking today. You can't, you could not do this six months ago. You had to go buy the, not from a tier one networking vendor. So that's the, <clears throat> so if you, if you look at how your infrastructure will look like, based on, on your workload needs, and what, where the right place of, for an application is, you can dynamically move your applications within your infrastructure. Obviously, I would not be running very compute intensive applications or, or, or disk incentive op applications on my switch, but there are applications out there where they actually could move within the rack from one place to the other, depending on what the right place for them is to go service the workload. So you're not tied. To, to, to just the whole, the, whole, the whole rack or your whole compute infrastructure and the connectivity becomes this big compute block that your workload and your applications can move around. And, and obviously, we're giving you incredible amount of power where you have the capability to go shoot, shoot yourself in the foot as well. But, but you know, with great power comes great responsibility. So I mean, it's, 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 but that's what we are unlocking. And as Dell, we have done a great job with this when we started as a company 30 years ago. Uh, we did this with the, with the desktops, the laptops, then the servers, different by with network, and I think storage, software-defined storage, there was a talk earlier about software-defined storage. That is where this will go. Why is it that I will decide where your application runs? I just give you a big compute block with interconnectivity, and your workloads can move around as you see fit. If, Oh, assuming people in this room are, are the kind of people that want to have that kind of a granular control. So that's why we are different. Again, I keep emphasizing, because that's something I keep hearing from customers, that um, you can actually use third party open tool set to manage your infrastructure versus going and getting a lock in with a vendor. What I would caution you is how many people here are using layer two in their infrastructure? Layer three? Okay. It's not a layer two solution. We believe that infrastructure is moving to layer three from the top of rack and above. And with Dell, we are giving you the transition path to run Dell operating system, which has all the L2 functionality, and move to an L3 based uh, infrastructure because we believe there's a lot more resiliency in L3 based environment than it is uh, uh, on the L2 environment. So for L2, it's not a it doesn't have the, all the required features to go run a big L2 environment. But for L3, it's a good fit. So I just wanted to make sure I caution people before, before we get in trouble. So the beauty of being in this business, for my, from my standpoint, is I actually act disaggregate the hardware and software. So I actually can go and, and kick their butt to go develop more features. So they are actually going to show a demo tomorrow. Uh, on, uh, uh, on the Dell switch running their Neutron plugin on S6000, which is a 32 port 40 gig box. So I wanted to show this slide. I think everybody who has to work with OpenStack has to have an implementation of this. So in the OpenStack workload, they, they also have a plugin which, which uh, uh, lets you run uh, open, uh, the orchestration tool set. So where are we going beyond this? And I want to use a lot of time, some time for debate and, and feedback, because I hope people give me good feedback. But you know where we are going as networking? Is we'll give you a choice. We'll keep adding choices. We'll certify. We'll put this behind. And for the extremely brave customers out there, we will even give you a choice of not running an operating system and putting your own OS on top. And from a tier one standpoint in networking industry, I can promise you this has never been done before. So that's, that's the high level overview of Dell networking, where we are going, how we think we are different, and how we are enabling software adoption on the networking layer in the data center. And now we are working with different partners out there to, to see what kind of applications or, or plugins we can bring to the switch to actually <coughs> enable scenarios that have been locked before. So, so ideas, feedback, flame, mail, potatoes, anything is, is most welcome. So, so that's, that's all I had. I wanted to use this opportunity. So what do you guys think? Uh, see, Dell Net, are you, do you work for Arista? 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> I have a biased opinion about it. We are investing very heavily in our own operating system, but just, just from a high level standpoint, Dell networking OS comes from the Forstan acquisition. So I don't know how many people here know Forstan. And Forstan has been around for a decade and a half, which was based on the NetBSD uh, 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 base. Uh, the Arista's version of EOS is, is a Linux-based OS, but it is not an open implementation. You have to actually have a different implementation of the Linux apps that you, you want to run in. They, 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 they allow you to run. Their, their gateway into their OS is scripting and APIs and things like that. They don't just let, allow you to run any application on the switch from what I know. And if anybody works for Arista is in the room can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, at Dell, we are also moving in the same direction. That's all I can say uh, from this standpoint. But again, the, the, the question becomes that innovation can only happen if you, if you don't wait for one another in certain ways. See, I, if I, if it's going, if, at Dell, if it's going to take me three months, for, right, or to get to where Cumulus is today, or if it's going to take Cumulus four months to get to where I am today, as customers, you should have the choice to benefit. And again, it's coming back to the same thing which is in our DNA, which is open standards, go disrupt, build mo the most efficient supply chain in the world, and you know what? Also keep investing in your own intellectual property and may the best man win. Because one side does not fit all. I, I look at the market, the, the way the market is the way the market is changing today, I think enterprise and cloud are going in two different directions. I don't know if how many people here agree with me or not. Enterprises are going consolidated, more virtualization, a lot of traffic. Cloud is just exploding e right and left. I mean, you know, enterprise is going from 100 servers to virtualized servers, but 50 physical servers. But the Amazons and the Azures of the world are, are going to, to 100,000 plus servers. How do I build a platform, one platform that solves both problems? I can't. And I'll be very open about it. Anybody who runs a networking company and is thinking one size can fit all is, is, is on Mars, needs, needs to come back on Earth. But I have to give them the choice. Right? If I want to play in both markets, I want to give them the choice. So, sorry, it was a little long answer, but that's, that's how we're different. Any other feedback? Yes? Do you work for HP? OK. I always ask that question because I don't want to say something. Uh, you see, HP is doing, how is this different than what HP is doing? HP is not doing this. I mean, they are going down the same old traditional model. And, and I have to be careful about what I comment on as far as my opinion about competitors are concerned, because big guys are sitting on the left side of the room. Uh, it's. I mean, they're still stuck to the vertically integrated model. Intel on the on the merchant silicon side. Sorry, I can. Not on the software side. The beauty is the differentiation that we have. By the way, the merchant silicon transition from Dell happened three years ago. We all went to Broadcom and Mellanox and Intel to get the merchant silicon. We've, that, that's, that wave is, is done. The second wave is providing the software as, as a platform or a choice of software. That, unless it has changed in the last 35 minutes, nobody else is doing it. So that's the differentiation. So with this coming this week, I imagine that it's going to have the capabilities to directly program the ACs themselves and not be what may have traditionally been more of a software based OS. Yes. Okay. So you, guys, you, you guys, are you guys helping write some of that integration or is it just native to some of those So, the, the, two things. I mean, we, are you asking for, uh, for low level access to the, to the ASIC APIs, right? I'm just asking just for general purposes. I, I imagine that there has to be hardware integration there. Yes. So, I mean, you see, everything is exposed to Linux constructs, right? So, so you have access. If you want deeper access to 
if you if you know the way the switch works, basically whatever chipset you're using, there is an SDK that comes with that chipset. For example, if it's a Broadcom uh, Trident 2 uh, platform, then it has the Broadcom SDK, which is what we hook into as vendors to basically everybody uses that. So, so for certain customers or for the right scenarios, we do expose the low-level programming tables as well as needed for people that need the, that kind of a, uh, programming power. But other than that, it's a uh, you know, you have just like a server, you can install any application and you can access all the APIs and the constructs on Linux that you can, right? I mean, that's, that's and, 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 the, and the front end ports are actually exposed as Ethernet ports. I think there's a talk tomorrow by Cumulus. I don't know if you, I don't know what time it is, but I highly encourage folks that are interested to, to actually go and, and attend that talk. I think their CTO is coming in to give that talk. Questions? Oh! No, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I, that's why I made a caution saying that, yes. yeah. So it is possible to achieve the same result that where the open stack is where to move network in for a computer and then you deal with the repetition of the traditional process of the capacity on a computer and then you can accelerate processing using the upload yeah, I absolutely. You're, you're, you brought up three different points. So, I think converged infrastructure is happening, and 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 uh, I don't know how familiar you are, but but Dell, by everybody, everybody has a strategy on converged infrastructure, and so do we. And we think ours is the best. So, uh, what we are not what we are not saying is that you can you should now start running applications on the switch. What we are saying is that we are giving you the choice to actually use the networking switch as a platform. And we will see how the market evolves and how the ecosystem evolves. You know what, 15 years ago, nobody knew that somebody would, could come up with an application like Microsoft Link on, 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 that will run on Windows servers and will actually not be using PBX phones. So that's, we are going as far as to say that we are providing the customers a choice of the platform. We will see how the ecosystem evolves. It'll be a learning process, and and we'll, but but at least we are giving that platform. Nobody's saying that you should start moving workloads and, and that. I think you're absolutely right that the, the the with the orchestration tools that exist like OpenStack, with the compute power, the way it is on the servers, switch is supposed to be a really fast highway. But but what if somebody came up with a more efficient way to route traffic? on a converged infrastructure which is other than either layer two protocols or layer three that exists today. That needs to be, unless you have a switching platform that gives you that flexibility, you will never be able to move into that direction. So that's the, we're just going as far as saying that we are now moving into that direction and we'll see how the ecosystem evolves and the adoption happens. Fair enough? Sorry, which partner are we talking about? Millinox is a, yeah. another approach. I mean, they, they keep the support of OpenStack. They keep the OpenStack farm, and transparently they spend the money there uploading to the. Yeah, and, and I, I, I'm, yeah, I hope next year when hopefully I'm still with Dell, they still keep me, and I'm back here at OpenStack, we have a more integrated solution that actually has runs workloads more efficiently. Today I'm here saying that I've gone to the point where we have enabled a platform. Tomorrow, we're, the, if, I'm, if I'm standing here next year with the same slide saying that I'm still giving you a choice and I have not innovated beyond it, then I think we have failed uh, as, 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 as vendors. So that's a fail. Hi. Hello. Uh, my name is Charles Kane. I'm from Arista. Uh, actually, ah. the, you mentioned about uh, Linux OS. So we are using uh, as the same the Linux. Uh, maybe yet, uh, to be honest, uh, the, we, we are using the Fedora core. So nothing different, I think. Anyway, the, I have one question about the bare metal or white box solutions. Actually, the, as I know, the currently the one one RU fixed switch, two R switch are available. But do you have any plan to make the modular chassis? Uh, 
even if I had 20 beers in me, I would not answer that question here and especially to you. <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, 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 I, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, we are using the leaf spine to TNA tool. No, I, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm very so. familiar with what you're doing. Um, yes. uh, and, and I think you've done a phenomenal job at creating platforms and solving certain problems in the cloud space with L3 and leaf spine architecture. Uh, let me just say that we at Dell we're not going to stop at this, and uh, and and my hope is 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 to come and 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 honestly, you know, uh, yes. I, I, being polite uh, to to you guys did a phenomenal job. You were the first ones that came with EOS based OS, but uh, uh, we'll, you'll see some more things coming from okay. Dell. So. so one more question. Actually, I love the FTOS. Actually, the, I support the four stand the switch okay. several years ago. So, is there any reason just to gave up the FTOS to move to the? the no, that's Atlas? that's that's a very valid question. Uh, we when the difference between I believe my personal opinion, the difference between Arista and and four stand is that. You guys have presence in two segments of the market. HFT, very significant, based on hardware accelerated fulcrum chipset. On the other side, cloud customers, right? And, and named cloud customers in the world. We have a huge legacy that we carried, the customer legacy that we yes. carried for a decade, right? Uh, we are not abandoning FTOS. I want to be very sure. We are continuing to invest on it. But we just have a difference of opinion as far as strategy is concerned because we believe that by giving customers a choice, we will actually ride the best of innovation waves. So as you mean you will uh, maintain? We will FTOS maintain. You will see more features. You'll okay. see next generation cool. operating systems yes, as well. That's what I want. Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. Thank you. I never. I actually should be given a prize. I never thought I'd get a question from Arista. <laughs> this should be recorded. Okay. Anybody else? Interesting, good, bad. Sorry? Uni, yes. So, uh, I think, I mean, I, I was at OCP and I gave a talk at OCP last week. Uh, we are looking at, at, at uh, contributing and, and participating very actively in OCP. Uh, uh, I think it's a matter of what are the next requirements from an OCP standpoint, but, but uh, with this fundamental shift in strategy, I mean, I, we are open, open about it. So, so, but I think OCP is, is also, I mean, they're, I mean, right now they have platforms in there, but really they're not very efficient. Uh, uh, and and we, are, we are in conversations with OCP to see what is the, the right thing for the community. So, but, but op open networking switches actually run on ONI board. I think there was a public statement we made regarding supporting ONI and, and OCP uh, release uh, last week as well. Okay. Thank you. And uh, this was very interesting uh, for your time.